If church growth is your goal, you're in the right place because in this video, you'll learn the best way to measure church growth and you'll learn how to calculate your precise church growth score. Well, hey there, my name is Brady Shearer. I'm the CEO of Pro Church Tools. And hey, if you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. Consider this, you and I are living through the biggest communication shift in 500 years. And now more than ever, we need accurate ways to evaluate our churches. Why? Well, because otherwise we're putting our churches in vulnerable spots. So in the next couple of minutes, I want to share with you what I see as the new rules for church growth. And I want to help you calculate your unique church growth score. And you'll even find a link to a free downloadable spreadsheet calculator in the description box on this YouTube video to help you do just that. Now, the first rule for church growth begins with a question. What is my church really trying to accomplish? Because before we can calculate your church growth score, we first need to answer this question. So don't skip this part. Here's the bottom line. Every church the church's reason for existence can be distilled down to three simple phrases. Love God, love people, make disciples. Where does this come from? Well, directly from Jesus, because it's from the Great Commission, along with the greatest commandments, that our churches find their purpose. And sure, you and I, we may phrase it differently at our churches and ministries, but at its core, every Christ-following church exists to help people love God, love others, and make disciples. But that's just part of the story, because now that we understand what our churches are really trying to accomplish, we can examine the metric churches often focus on most. And for many of our churches, Sunday service attendance is the growth metric that we value above all others. But here's the deal. Church attendance as a measurement tool is problematic. Why? Well, think of it like your body weight when you step on a scale. The number tends to fluctuate seemingly without any good reason. And on its own, the number itself won't indicate if you are in good health or even if you're making progress. To make a point, here are nine church attendance statistics you need to know. Number one, in a 2005 study of annual church attendance that included 200,000 American churches, both evangelical, Catholic, and mainline, it was revealed only about 25% of Americans show up to church at least three out of every eight Sundays. Statistic number two, 46% of churchgoers attend a church of 100 or fewer. Just 8% of churchgoers attend a church of 1,000 or more. Mm, let's talk about young people. Only two in 10 millennials believe church attendance is important. 59% of millennials who grew up in the church have dropped out at some point. Let's talk about church sizes on average. 50% of all churches in America average less than 100 in worship attendance. 40% of all churches in America average between 100 and 350 in attendance, and only 10% of all churches in America average more than 350 in attendance. Big stat, the biggest one. If present trends continue, the percentage of the population that attends church in 2050 is estimated to be almost half of what it was in the 1990s, a drop from 20.4% to 11.7%. So what do these statistics mean for you and your church? Well, here are my key takeaways. Firstly, most churches are small. 90% of American churches average 350 people or fewer in weekly attendance. Secondly, most churchgoers prefer smaller churches. Despite the visibility of mega churches, churchgoers seem to prefer smaller sized congregations. Consider that less than one in 10 churchgoers attend congregations with average attendance of 1,000 or more. Thirdly, overall church attendance is declining across the board. We're living through the biggest communication shift in 500 years. Every industry is being disrupted and our churches, well, we're not immune to these changes. And finally, young people are valuing church attendance at historically low rates. And that's troubling because there are a ton of young people already. Millennials are the largest generation in both the Canadian and American workforces. And Gen Z, the generation after millennials, is coming up right behind them. And we don't stop there. Remember, every Christ following church exists, why? To help people love God, love others, and make disciples. This is your North Star. This is your church's purpose. But here's the problem. Church attendance is a really, really bad way of evaluating this purpose. Here are two reasons why. Reason number one, church attendance only tracks external growth. Think about this. There are two ways of growing your church. There's internal growth, and this is where your existing congregation grows in their ability to love God, love others, and make disciples. And then, of course, 
there's external growth. And this is what most of us think of when we think of a church growing. This is when new people join your congregation and they grow in their ability to love God, love others, and make disciples. And herein lies one of the problems with church attendance as a measuring stick. Church attendance only cares about external growth. Church attendance will only tell you if more people are attending your church and your Sunday service this year compared to last year. In no way can church attendance offer any insight into internal growth at your church. Are the people already attending your church becoming more like Jesus? Church attendance does not care. So that's reason number one. Reason number two why church attendance is bad at measuring church growth and health, attendance overvalues the one hour weekend service. Let me ask you this. Do you remember when watching movies meant renting a DVD? Or do you remember when taking photos required an actual camera? It wasn't that long ago. Again, you and I, we're living through the biggest communication shift since the printing press, and it's just getting started. And think about it this way. Your week has 168 hours. And if Sunday service is just about one hour, let's say, how is your church reaching people in the other 167? Because Here's the good news. Thanks to the internet, you have the unprecedented ability to reach your congregation and community in the 167 hours beyond your Sunday service. I like to say it this way, seize the 167. Church attendance is universally declining, you say. Is that, no worries, I don't need them to come to me because I can go to them. Here's a fascinating thought exercise. I want you to ask yourself this question. How would your church accomplish its mission if your in-person Sunday service did not exist? To make a point, consider these parallels and cautionary tales. Toys R Us could have asked themselves, how would we sell toys if our physical retail spaces didn't exist? Sears could have asked themselves, how would we sell appliances if our physical retail spaces didn't exist? And Blockbuster, well, they could have asked themselves, how would we rent movies if our physical retail spaces didn't exist? But simply stated, none of these retailers were able to answer that question, and now they're facing extinction, all of them, if they're not gone already. So what does this mean for you? Well, in decades past, your church was forced to rely on in-person Sunday service attendance. Otherwise, how else would you reach your congregation and community? That world is gone though. Sure, in-person weekly services still matter, but church attendance as a metric drastically overvalues them. Church attendance only cares about one hour each week. It ignores the other 167 hours entirely. And by now, I hope it's clear to you why church attendance is a problematic way of measuring church growth and health. On the other hand, I'm not suggesting you stop tracking church attendance altogether. It should be included in how you measure church growth, but it can't be everything. Want to know the best part? Well, there is a more holistic and accurate way of measuring church growth. Even better, there's a precise method for tracking church growth month after month after month. You see, measuring church growth requires the following three variables. The what, the how, and the metric. Here's what I mean. The illustration you're seeing now demonstrates how churches have traditionally measured growth. At the bottom of the pyramid, we have the what. Love God, love people, make disciples. The mission of every church can be contained within these three objectives. And this is why we do what we do. This part never changes. From there, we get the how. And this is the one hour Sunday service. Here, churches invest the majority of their time, money, and resources into a weekly live event. And if you're like most churches, the hope of accomplishing your mission hinges primarily on this service. And this leads us to the top of the pyramid to the metric we care most about, church attendance. The metric of church attendance is what we care about most. Why? Well, because the Sunday service is seen as our best chance for accomplishing the mission Thus, the more people attending services, the better. And as it turns out, using church attendance as the primary measuring stick for church growth actually makes sense in light of this illustration. Why? Well, simply stated, our fixation on attendance exists thanks to our obsession with the Sunday service. Here's the bottom line. Most churches believe the best way to accomplish their mission is through their Sunday service, and frankly, this made sense in decades past. But again, we're living through the biggest communication shift in 500 years. Church attendance is declining across the board and to overly rely on a weekend service to accomplish your church's mission means putting your church in a vulnerable position. So if not church attendance, then what? What is this mystery metric that matters so much? Well, remember, every church's reason for existence can be distilled down to those three simple phrases, love God, love people, make disciples. Now for a moment, I really want you to pay attention to each of those three objectives, love God, 
love people, and make disciples. Do you see how each of these objectives begins? Each begins with a verb. And to go back to fourth grade English class, a verb is an action word. It requires you to actually do something. And this makes sense, right? You can't love God passively. You can't love people passively. You definitely cannot make disciples passively. Each of these objectives demands action. And I don't know about you, but I want a church full of active participants, not a church of passive spectators taking up space. This is why everything you and I do in our churches boils down to just two words. Our church's vision, mission, events, promotions, operations, everything we do, it can all be summed up in these two words. These two words represent the metric you need to care about, next steps. Truthfully, if you take away anything from this video, if you remember anything at all, these are the two words to commit to memory, next steps. Because it's without next steps. Without them, well, your church can't accomplish its mission. Without next steps, all you have is a congregation of passive spectators. So what does this mean for you? Well, here's the new paradigm for measuring church growth. At the bottom of the pyramid is the what? Love God, love people, make disciples. Again, this part never changes. From there, we have the how. Seize the 167. Your week has 168 hours. If Sunday service is just one hour and people are attending at lower rates than ever, well, how is your church re reaching people in the other 167? And now at the top of the pyramid, instead of attendance, we have the metric of next steps. I want a church full of active participants, not passive spectators. Next steps measures church activity and involvement all week long, not simply sitting in a pew on Sunday morning. Look, the old rules for measuring church growth they're too narrow. They focus too much on one thing, the Sunday service. The new rules for measuring church growth aim to be holistic. They're inclusive of everything that your church is doing. Not only that, but the new rules track both internal and external growth. Is church attendance a next step? Absolutely, but it's just one type of next step a person in your church or outside your church can take. Now, you might be wondering, well, what exactly is a next step? How is that defined? Well, simply stated, a next step is any action a person takes towards loving God, loving people, and making disciples, because that's what really matters, right? And in my experience, there are at least 17 different next steps almost every church should be tracking, and here they are on the screen. Keep in mind, these 17 types of next steps are just a baseline, and, and every church is unique. Your church is unique, so you should expand upon this list to include next steps that are not covered. Of course, now that we've set the new rules for measuring church growth, we can get to the fun stuff. Ready to calculate your unique church growth score? Let's do it. Calculating your church growth score is a simple three-step process. I recommend that you do it every month because by measuring your score every month, you'll be able to accurately and consistently track your ups and downs throughout the year. And this is especially helpful for evaluating what's working and what's not. If your score spikes or drops in a given month, you can use that data to pinpoint the cause of it. And this will allow you to double down on what's working while moving on from what is not working. Here's how it works. The first step to calculating your church growth score is to build a master list of possible next steps at your church. You can use the list of 17 next steps I shared earlier as a baseline, and then take inventory of every event, ministry, that occurs within your church and make yourself a master list. That's the first step. Step number two is to assign a point value, one through 10, to each next step in your list. Because look, not all next steps are made equal, right? Following your church on Instagram is less meaningful than being baptized. And knowing this, you'll want to weigh each next step in your master list proportionally based on its significance to both your church and the individual. So go through your master list of next steps and assign a value from one to 10 to each on your list. In this graphic, you'll see an example of how a pastor from a church of 100 scored each next step, just to give you an idea of how this could be done. And let me say, make sure you put some thought into this because changing your value rankings frequently is not recommended because it can skew your church growth score on a month to month basis. On the other side of the coin though, don't feel like this needs to be perfect because it doesn't, it needs to be done. Finally, now that you've created your master list of next steps and assigned a number value to each based on importance, the last step in the process is simply to track the number of actions being taken for each next step. How should you do this? Well, I recommend tracking next steps on a weekly basis. And if you're interested in learning more on how we quantify each of our next steps, what qualifies, what doesn't, make sure to click the link in the show notes on YouTube that will take you to the full post for this video where we explain that process in detail. And now, at this point, you'll just wanna plug all of your next steps numbers into a spreadsheet, and here's what that could look like. 
Now, in my experience, the best way to track your church growth score is using an automated spreadsheet. It makes things considerably easier, easier to calculate for sure. And, and here's the good news. I've actually created a spreadsheet for this exact purpose and it's completely free to download. I call it the Church Growth Calculator Spreadsheet. It even comes with a video tutorial that shows you how to use it and customize it for your church's needs. Just click the link in the description of this YouTube video and you can download it for free. To summarize, you and I, we're living through the biggest communication shift in 500 years, and now more than ever, we need accurate ways of evaluating our churches. Otherwise, we're putting our churches in vulnerable positions. What does this mean for you? Well, to accurately and holistically measure church growth, we need to look beyond just church attendance and our weekend services. Church is so much more than just a Sunday morning, and the way we measure church growth should reflect that truth. The best way to measure church growth, what is it? next steps. I don't know about you, but I want a church full of active participants continually moving towards loving God, loving others, and making disciples. Without next steps, your church cannot accomplish this mission though. So use the free downloadable church growth calculator spreadsheet to measure your church growth score, find out what it is, and then continually track that score month after month to see how your church is growing. If your score spikes or drops in a given month, use that data to pinpoint the cause of it. And this is gonna allow you to double down on what's working while moving on from what isn't. Did you learn something cool in this video? If so, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button below. And now I'm gonna turn things over to you. What next step are you most excited to track at your church? Earlier, I shared a list of 17 next steps that churches should be tracking. Which one stood out to you on that list? Or was there one that I didn't include on that list that you think should be there? Let me know by leaving your answer in the comments on this YouTube video.